St. Luke begins this section of the gospel with an interesting phrase. As Jesus begins his last journey to Jerusalem, where he knows that betrayal, condemnation, torture, and a painful humiliation death are waiting for him, St. Luke tells us that Jesus resolutely took the road for Jerusalem. St. Luke's point is that Jesus knew beforehand that his mission would be painful and difficult. But at the same time, Jesus accepted, accepted and fulfilled it willingly. Jesus did it out of love for us and also to set an example for us. To follow Christ's path in life will be painful and difficult for us too at times. And we, with God's strength, to strengthen us, I call to resolutely go on our own personal journey to Jerusalem, to persevere in our friendship and fidelity with Christ no matter what. If we want to follow Christ, we have to expect difficulties. And along the way to Jerusalem, Jesus meets three men who have heard his call in their hearts. They want to join his group and become his followers. And these encounters can help to teach us about what it means to follow Christ, what it means to be a disciple. The first potential disciple in today's gospel perhaps doesn't understand that following our Lord is a lifelong commitment. Even foxes and birds have the security of their natural habitats. But Christians are on an unpredictable adventure. We simply don't know where God will lead us or what he may ask us to do. When we join Christ's army, we have to hand him a blank check. And the second disciple wants to attend to important family business, but sometimes following our Lord requires sacrifice and self-denial. Leave the dead to bury the dead means leaving behind one's plants and comfort zones in order to put all our eggs into Christ's basket. Our Lord perhaps is telling him that the family business he's concerned about can already be, handed, can be handled by another member of his family. The last potential disciple wants to go home and say goodbye first. Our Lord sees something in that request, and we have to remember that the Lord can read hearts, and perhaps he knew that the disciple would go home and stay there. Perhaps others would convince him not to leave. Following Christ is the best thing we can do for ourselves and our family, and we must never lose sight of that. Christ, only after reaching Easter Sunday by passing through Good Friday, and we Christians can expect nothing less. This is the lesson Jesus teaches us with his comment about setting our hands on the plow. Once we decide to follow Christ, there will be times when we feel like turning back because it will be hard work. Plowing fields by hand was no easy task. The farmer hitched the plow to oxen or cattle or sometimes even a donkey. As the animal made its way across the field, the farmer held the handles of the plow and pressed the blade into the ground, cutting a furrow that would later be used for planting. To make the best use of the field, the furrows had to be straight. This meant keeping an eye out constantly to direct the often stubborn animals. To make sure the seed would germinate, the furrows had to be deep. This meant keeping a firm and steady hand on the plow itself for long periods of time in spite of the hard or rocky soil that resisted the blade of the plow. It was slow work and exhausting. Many times a farmer would be tempted to take or rest or to relax his grip. But the plowing season was brief because the planting season was brief. If the farmers didn't keep their hands on the plow, their harvest would be meagre. Plowing fields is not very exciting or dramatic work, and yet, without it, it can't bring in a harvest. In the same way, unless we are faithful to Christ in the normal tasks of our daily lives, we cannot grow in Christian virtue and we cannot 
bring in the harvest of joy, peace, wisdom, and fulfillment that Christ wants to give us. Keeping our hands to the plow in daily life means being faithful to our normal responsibilities. It means doing our jobs the way Christ would do them if he were in our position. It means doing our chores the way Jesus, Mary, and Joseph did them in Nazareth. It means using our time well, not wasted on habits of laziness and self-indulgence. It means patiently putting up with the imperfections of those around us, day after day, just as God puts up with our own imperfections. And it means, as St. Paul said in the second reading, to serve each other in works of love, to love your neighbor as yourself. Sometimes loving our neighbors as ourselves is difficult, a costly task. Those are the moments when we show that we are truly followers of Christ, not just superficial, hypocritical, cardboard cutout Christians. Sometimes forgiving our enemies makes our heart bleed. But those are the times when we can follow Christ most closely and hang with him on the cross. We don't know ahead of time what path God will choose for us. We are not foxes or birds. But we do know where that path will lead us, closer and closer to Christ, closer and closer to the fulfillment, the interior peace, and the lasting happiness that we long for and that we can't achieve by ourselves. This is the bread and butter of Christian living. This is what it means to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So let's all keep our hands on the plow and continue to follow Christ and not look back.